today I want to share with you the strategies that I use with my clients to get developer jobs, remote developer jobs, and I'm pretty sure this will change your entire perspective on the entire process and you for sure will get a developer job, a remote developer job if you follow these strategies. The first strategy is to focus on depth, not breadth. What do I mean by that? I know that juniors want to learn everything. Heck, I wanted to learn everything. If you would have seen my wish list for courses on Udemy, you know what I'm talking about. And probably you have a wish list of courses or technologies that you are eager to get into because your favorite influencer is telling you about them. Well, while that might be, you know, useful to know a bunch of things, like who doesn't like a person who is very skilled and knows everything, your job as a junior, especially right now with chat GPT, with the layoffs and whatnot, it's super important to focus on your depth. So instead of mastering, you know, like JavaScript and a bunch of frameworks and libraries and know a bit of Angular, a bit of React, no Next, no view no no js no python instead of like focusing and spreading yourself thin among all these technologies pick two or three technologies that you want to learn like for example javascript react and next okay and focus on like really understanding those technologies so well that you can build anything you want heck even if you focus just on javascript and you'll become like the best javascript developer you can build apps with JavaScript better than most people can build with React and Next. Like imagine like the value that you will bring to a company. You will be so good, okay? I'm not saying do that, but just to put things into perspective, like most people, even if they have like two, three years of experience, don't know J JavaScript that well. I know because I only learned JavaScript really well once I started teaching it. I started to understand the quirks, so I started to understand patterns and whatnot. Like most people don't know that, okay? And if you are that guy or that girl that focuses so much on like fundamentals and building as many features into a product you will absolutely blow everyone out of the water why am i saying this is because like instead of having you know like the common advice for junior developers is to build a portfolio right and in that portfolio you have to put all the apps all the projects that you've been making and whatnot push to git you know the advice right that sounds like a good advice but like what if instead of making 20 projects where you have like similar features why not build just one project and then dedicate all your awake time all your energy into making that project like a real product like just think about it like that if you take let's say the to do app the infamous to do app which everyone recommends you to do i recommend you to do my students are making it as part of the roadmap at some point actually twice instead of just doing the bare minimum like adding a to do checking off a to do and deleting a to do like that's where everyone stops why not go all in like for example trello if you are familiar with it it's an app that allows you to manage tasks okay and it's pretty much a to-do app then there is another app that i really like right now and we are using it to manage our projects it's called linear this is like the replacement of jira which is another type of to-do app which is used for software teams not just software teams but software teams usually usually use it to manage their projects that's still a to-do app. The point that I'm trying to make is instead of spreading yourself thin with learning so many technologies and building so many projects, narrow down and decide, okay, I wanna learn these three things, these three technologies, and I wanna build an app that has 500 features. Like imagine like how much better would you get if you go in with this mindset, depth rather than breadth, because you'll be repeating the same patterns over and over from different angles. Not only you'll have exposure, like most juniors, most people have a bunch of exposure to a bunch of things, but now you'll also have experience. Experience comes from repetition, from encountering problems and solving weird problems, right? That's how it works. I hope you understand this. The next thing is to understand that this is not easy, okay? Since, I, do, I don't know, maybe November, things kind of changed when, once the layoff started, you know, like becoming a thing right now. There is still demand for developers. I mean, we are, we have internet, right? People have problems, okay? There is a demand for people who can solve problems, okay? That's like obvious, I hope you understand this. The barrier of entry just got high, and this is obvious. And now because the barrier of entry got higher, the tide, you know, the tide left, lifted all the boats, right? 
you need to be able to catch up with the tide. Otherwise, you'll be drowning and it is that easy. So now when the tide gets, gets up, you need to figure out what is the standard and then try to become the standard, the average developer. Do I recommend you to be the average developer? No, but you need to start from the average and then build from there. So you need to figure out what is the average. I cannot tell you what is the average because this is kind of impossible, but if I can give you one tip, that would be to be able to build fully fledged products. If you can make a website or a web app that feels premium, you are using a bunch of apps every day. Try to make an app that feels and works exactly like an app that you're using every day. Don't cut corners on the design. Don't cut corners on the user experience. Don't cut corners on how you write your code. Don't cut corners on anything and try to raise the quality of your work to like the craziest levels. And then you will be a developer that matches the standard of developers in 2023. The standards are important. And if you are a junior, you don't know those standards. I understand that, but that's your problem, okay? It's not your fault, but it's your problem. You need to figure out what that is. And the third tip that I'm gonna give you is to stop focusing on numbers. People complaining that, oh, I've applied to 300 jobs and I didn't get anything out of it. Look, I'm gonna give you again, a perspective outside of development. I'm gonna give you a perspective from building a business kind of thing, right? So if you wanna build, let's say, a social media marketing agency, I've tried that in the past. And one of the things that you need to do for that specific niche where I was trying to build my business, I had to do like 100 cold calls a day. So imagine you, whenever you press the apply button, you are making a cold call. If you have any emotion related to that press of a button, and if you feel like 300 job applications is too much, it should take you one day to fill in 300 job applications. And if you don't have the time or the energy, if you are too lazy, outsource it to someone in Philippines because it's gonna cost you four bucks an hour and someone else is gonna do it for you. I've made videos about that. Or use some automation tool to apply on your behalf. You can Google that. Stop looking at those numbers and start panicking, right? If you apply to like 6,000 jobs, and you're not getting any hits. All right, there's something wrong with your resume, with your portfolio. It's not about the fact that you have the wrong formatting on your resume. Your portfolio might be crap. It is what it is, fix it. If you don't get any hits on your resume, make a better application. You are not up to standard, okay? And there is no trick that you can do for your resume to fix and blah, blah, blah. If you are crap, it doesn't matter what kind of resume format you have. It doesn't matter like how much you spend to try to make it, what's the name of that bot? TAS, AST, I forgot the name of that bot that checks your resume if it's good or not. Like your recruiters look at it and they're like, okay, this guy doesn't have experience. So again, you need to go up to standards and you need to forget about pressing those buttons and being attached to pressing that button. It is what it is. Right now, you might need to apply to 2000 jobs until you get a hit. Is it worth it? Yes, why not? Like, I don't understand what's the problem. And a lot of people are complaining about that and feel like, oh, it's so bad that I need to apply to 2000 jobs. This is what it is. Do you have any other solution? Yeah, you can try networking, but if you try networking and your resume is still bad, if you have no skills, it all goes full circle. Do you have the skills? Yes or no? I mean, if you say no, that means you don't have depth. You only have breadth. And people with experience can see that. So if you take any advice from this video is whenever you learn a skill like HTML and CSS or like JavaScript or like React, when you think you know enough, you're barely scratching the surface. You're not up to standard. Build more, create more, spend more time, spend more energy and be active. Don't be just, oh yeah, Press the timer and let the timer go. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I spent two hours, but in reality, you haven't done anything. Like be active, be proactive, research, build more stuff, build more. You don't even need to reinvent the wheel. You can just take an app that you're using every day. Trello, I give you the app. Make it, make a Trello one-on-one, -on -one. every single feature, copy every single feature. I'm telling you, you'll spend two years building that app. And by the end of that, you'll have so much knowledge and you might not even have to get a job because maybe you find a tweak once you are building that app and you can create your own app, your own product. Just think outside the box, work more, build more, and then you'll become valuable. Don't be afraid of ChatGPT. Like this is one of the things that I see a lot. People are so scared of ChatGPT. And if I'm being honest with you, I've tried to use ChatGPT multiple times to replace myself from creating these videos, right? Because I don't, I'm lazy, I'm like you. I'm lazy, I don't wanna do the work and I wanna get all the benefits. But then I've tried it so many times with so many prompts, with so many like, phew, I was going crazy. And then I realized like, 
ChatGPT is an average YouTuber. Of course, it's not gonna be able to replace me because my ideas and my concepts and what I'm telling you to do is coming from real world experience. It's not some regurgitated information that ChatGPT has access to, right? And you wanna be that guy or that girl that cannot be replaced. And if you wanna to get to that point where you're not getting replaced, you need to get experience by building stuff, by developing those patterns in your head where you have deep knowledge of a specific subject or concept. That's how you become super valuable. And it won't matter what kind of economical situation we have because you'll just be good. And people always want to get good people, people that can build stuff. Again, think about it if I'm right or wrong, okay? Don't take my words for granted. Use your brain, right? Think about what I said. Is it important to focus on depth or breadth? Think about that. Is it important to focus on those numbers and get demotivated when you don't get the hits that you want or be completely stoic about those numbers and think about how to optimize everything? Because if you let emotions fuel your journey, you will always be like leaf in the wind, like a dead fish in the sea. You're gonna be going where, wherever the current takes you. You need to be able to swim upstream. To be able to do that, you need to be stoic and unemotional. That's pretty much it. Stop freaking out, do more work. That's pretty much the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you wanna get your skills to the max, you want a roadmap, you want support, feedback, a crazy community, life goals, interview prep, you want me to give you the projects, every single problem that you have, I've solved it. And if you are interested in me giving that to you, and if you're interested in being part of my program, then apply for a free consultation call. The link is in the description. Apply or not, I don't really care, but I know it's gonna help you. Anyway, that's the video. Peace out.